Ladies and gentlemen, it is Delta's pleasure to welcome you to Missoula, where the local time is 1.30. Welcome to Montana. Uh, if you missed the past couple of videos, I'm here for the Icarus race, which is this unsupported paramotor mission from Polson, Montana, about 1,200 miles all the way down to about near Vegas. That's what we're here for. Uh, Shane and I just kind of landed on top of this little hill here, get some drone shots for the Hi. Team Fly Halo Knowledge Center. Pretty jazzed, it's beautiful up here. The race starts early tomorrow morning. I'm probably going to do a couple more tests before then, but uh, I think we're going to fly off this mountain and see how that goes. Taking a little stick with me in the line. Oh, I'm gonna get it with my feet. Oh, geez. All right, let me try to figure out this wrap situation. No air traffic. Get it around the tip line too. All right, you ready? Uh, almost. I kind of. Let me get in position here. Um, whenever you're ready. Well, you're kind of low, but. Whatever. I'll try it quick. Yep, do it. Nice. Oh my god, he's doing it fast. So cool. Alright, I'm gonna pop that. You ready? Yep. I'm not supposed to so you're all Run by a high five. Huh, get it. Uh, okay, killed it. All right, well, good morning. That is officially launch number two, uh, the second guy in the adventure series. The race guys are holding off till about 10 or 11, and then we're gonna go up. So I've got pretty much all my stuff situated. Uh, I've got a lot of weight. Like, I never really put it together, but my fuel weight, my giant duffel, and my reserve, it really adds up. And uh, with this wind, I think I'll be fine, but we'll see when it comes to like those no wind launch days. But yeah, I'm just gonna wait around a little bit longer. I've got everything prepped. I think I'm good to go. I'll show you guys real quick what my plan is. I'm trying to go hopefully about 70 miles to the first checkpoint, which is a gas station. And from there, I'm gonna go to another gas station. And if everything works out today, the end of this video, I'll be at an airport. If not, I think I'm gonna find myself camping at like a gas station somewhere or maybe a hotel. So we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna chill for a little bit and then we'll freaking send it. Check, check. All right, so here's the setup. We're gonna clip in first before I put any gloves on. Clip that in, get my speed bar hooked in. 
Clip that riser in. Fuel bladder is the next step. Fuel bladder goes on my chest like that. I'm actually gonna wrap this on the inside. My little tube doohickey. Six liters of gas. Last but not least, just have to dig around for my last carabiner. All right, this is where the, the real weight gets added. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna get my motor started. Then I'll worry about gloves. All right, so freaking official start line at the Icarus. Just gotta get my gloves situated and then hopefully pray that I freaking nail it on the first try. I think the competition is trying to hose me laying his wing out in front of me, just leaving it there. Okay, this is possibly gonna be the most challenging launch I've ever done. I'm sure it'll get topped this week. Yeah, buddy, send it. Oh yeah, oh, this is heavy and hot, all right. I'm gonna go for it though. Woo! Nailed it! Feeling pretty heavy. <laughs> Almost sunk down on that one, but we're good. We got the power. All right, we're gonna do one pass right through the pylon, shindig. Get the official start line going. There it is. Oh man, I'm out of breath. That was pretty gnarly. So my flight plan for this flight is to Jet down this mountain range, the Mission Mountains right here, and then we get to Missoula. There's some airspace there. I have to make sure I get up over 5,700 feet to pass over that airspace. And then I'm gonna hang a left and head east down a valley. And I've got two gas, possible gas stops. I'm gonna see what my fuel situation is, see which one I wanna land at. Both of them are relatively tight launch sites. Landing probably won't be a big issue, but launching this beast is going to be tough. Right here is my buddy Canyon. Shout out to Canyon. He just decided he was going to participate in the race, like, last night. Alright! Whoa! We're on Zenith? No way! I hope it's still recording to my GoPro. I was just talking about you. Yeah, dude. I can't hear you that well. It's not coming through. But I think I'll be waiting for a bit more wind on the next one. Yeah, right? Uh, I'm just going to sign off. All right. I think I'm going to go speed bar pretty soon. All right. Bye, bye. See you, dude. All right. I think we're back on. Got the Cena ordeal situated. I'm not going to pull out my phone just yet because I don't think I need it for navigation. Uh, basically, I'm just following this highway down the uh, mountain range here. Once I know I'm getting close, I'm gonna pull up my phone so that I know exactly how to navigate around the Missoula airspace. But I think I'm gonna go speed bar for a little while here, try to cover some ground. I'm only fighting probably a few mile per hour headwind. So kind of lame that it's a headwind, but I'm pretty sure it's light. But I'm gonna use that speed bar try to cut through a bit. Uh, basically, race class, we just got myself in Canyon right now, and then uh, Trey, Dean, and then we got a guy on a trike, which I believe he said he has to leave tomorrow because he's got issues with his motor. So anyway, I'm gonna turn off the camera now, conserve some battery on my Cena and GoPro, and I don't know, we'll catch up somewhere where the next interesting point might be. Might be my landing, might be Missoula. We'll see.
All right, we are back. I hope the GoPro lasts. Uh, these GoPros do not do well when it's cold out. And let me tell you what, I think that was the coldest my hand has ever been while flying. But anyway, we made it to this town here. I actually bypassed my first fuel stop because I was running efficiently enough that I still had six liters in my tank. And right now I probably have three to four still in my tank. So that's pretty awesome. As far as this town goes, I uh, checked it out on Google Maps and picked a few spots that I figured I might be able to land in. The gas station is on the far end over there by the median of the highway, but everything looks so much smaller in person. As I fly around and get a better look on this, let's talk a little bit about this flight. The first stretch, the first third, I started on speed bar and pretty quick I decided against that because I found that if I went nearly all the way up to cloud base, I could actually get a bit of a tailwind. So I got off the bar, went just trims out, and I was cruising right along at like 40-ish miles an hour. So that was really good. And I went straight down to Missoula, got to Missoula, and I had to take my phone out a couple times, which requires taking my glove off. Dude, my hand froze so bad, but it was all right. I mean, I got feeling back now. So, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. Ah, uh, shit, are those wires? They might be wires. I gotta take a closer look at this place. All right, let's trim in. Back to neutral flight speed. Get a little bit more on this guy. So you can see the gas station right down there. That's where I'm headed. There's the perfect little landing area there, unless it's covered in power lines, which I can't quite see yet. I gotta get down lower. And I also have to establish which way the wind's going. That pond looks like it's going from my left to my right. Let's see. So if I get myself really, really close in here, that's the most convenient route. If not, I can take a safe route and land her somewhere else and walk in. Power lines are so hard to see from the air. That little parking lot, I uh, can't really point to it, looks like a good spot to land. As long as there's no power lines, other options, nothing really close. That looks like a good landing spot. I don't know about a launch spot, dude. Okay, we got power lines here. Those cross the road. I'm just gonna fly down the railroad tracks here. Power lines, power lines. Yeah, I'm gonna abort that. This little spot on the uh, closer side here might actually be more doable. I think I'm gonna try to take that route. Dude, this is a tight landing area. I might have to walk to uh, find a good launch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're down. All right, let's get unclipped. Not bad. So, about that. Not my best landing ever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's how much fuel I have left. Got plenty of that. Uh, I don't know if this place is going to cut it for a launch site. Alright, so that was a little bit of an exciting landing. I got my wing out of the tree, and uh, there's actually another pilot here, one of the adventure racer guys. He actually landed out in a field that way, um, so I think that's what I'm going to do because this is tight. It worked for a landing. Kind of. I mean, I touched the trees a little bit, but 
it worked but for launch i think i'm gonna go out that way there's actually a flag way down there but it's it's coming from all different directions so it's kind of hard to tell um i'm gonna walk out in that field with my wing my duffel and put those out there because i don't think anyone will mess with them and uh then i'm gonna bring my motor and my bladder over to the gas station back there fill them up and then uh mix the oil out in the field and then i guess we'll set up and launch again all right so i just filled up here uh, filled up the bladder filled up the motor i have to go back to where my duffel is to mix the oil but i did crack a spar on that sketchy landing right back here so i'm gonna run into that gas station get some duct tape and i think she'll be set got a little repair going on some duct tape a little super glue underneath should be all right all right not a bad launch setup I just have to avoid that bush it's a clip in Not much wind going on. Oh, good. Alright, I'm just waiting and meditating for the right cycle of wind. It's so shifty out here. A minute ago I had a tailwind, hoping to get a little bit of an increased headwind. This pack is so heavy to launch with, dude. I just want to get it and get it right. I feel a little bit. I can't even tell which way it's going. It's going that way now. I'll wait. Patience. Yeah, it's going directly that way now. That's a good amount of wind, but it's the wrong direction. Now it's from my right. Okay. Headwind. We're going to go for it. God, I am so relieved to get in the air. You don't even know. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> that was a bit of poor decision making on my part to take that launch or that landing. It was pretty tight, too tight really. And um, I paid for it because I had to sit there in the parking lot and glue my frame back together, but it's all good. It feels pretty strong after I wrap the duct tape around it. In other news, uh, shout out to some of the locals. One of the guys helped me out. Uh, he drove me from the gas station in the back of his truck to where my wing was. So that was super nice of him. I'll show you guys my flight plan for this flight. Hopefully we can make this happen. So I'm trying to stretch it all the way 100 miles. Uh, my last flight was exactly 100 miles. This one, I'm really hoping that the wind is still in my favor and I can make it. Basically, I'm trying to get down here to the bottom right of the screen, but somewhere in the middle, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see, there's some surface class E airspace and I'm not allowed to fly in that. So what I'm doing, as I set a little checkpoint 
right to the edge of that class E and I'm gonna try to track a straight line there and then I make a slight turn and head towards that airport. I have the taste of gas in my mouth because this little vent line that goes to my secondary tank, if it is below the level of the tank, it spews out gasoline. And lesson learned, I was holding it in my mouth while I clipped in my risers. So I got a nice mouthful of gasoline. That was pretty disgusting. Yeah, I'm gonna keep climbing because I wanna get altitude to hopefully get the tailwind that's up high. I put my gloves in my bag because I wanted to launch barehanded, get every advantage I can. Oh, before I sign off, here's a, a thing I did before. The ground wind versus the upper wind, it's generally a little bit different. It's, gen well I should say it's generally not the same. The ground wind was going that way, but pro tip, if you look at the cloud shadows very closely, you can actually see what direction the clouds are moving across the ground to get a reference of what the um, the wind direction is up at cloud base. I think the cloud base uh, direction is more favorable for me. So I'm gonna climb really super high and try to get any bit of tailwind I can, uh, which means I need those gloves or else my hands will freeze. So I'm gonna peace out for now and hopefully We'll make it to that airport. I'm pretty confident, especially since on my last flight, I landed with like four liters. So anyway, peace out. See you guys in a minute. battery died. I don't know how much of that I got, but we're here at the fuel farm. Made it down with a nice landing. Oh, I'm so cold. I don't know if you can see my hand. It's almost purple. Well, I'm going to unload, dismount, and go in the building here and see what's up. Hopefully we can get to town, get some food. I think I'm going to park it here for tonight. Rad. All right, check this out. I apologize if the freaking camera's shaking because I'm so cold. Parked my motor over there by the fuel farm and uh, the building closes, but they got this rad little pilot shack and I haven't gone in yet, but apparently two. Oh, enter, duh. I think I need two hands for this. All right, I struggled, but I gotta open. Dude. This is sick. Check this out. Got a couch to sleep on, a sink. Hopefully there's like no one chilling in here, but it's heated in here, which is amazing. So I'm definitely staying here for the night. Let's see, we just got a bathroom. Nothing too fancy. That door is a little tricky to open. I don't see anyone else around here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll fuel up my motor and carry all my gear over to the pilot shack. And I can probably bring it in here so I know it's safe. And uh, then we'll see about going to the town to get some food because I'm hungry. I haven't really eaten a real meal today. So I think I'm gonna end up having to walk, but it doesn't look that far, so. I think it'll be worth it. I'm gonna get all my stuff uh, over there, we'll fuel it, and then bring it over. All right, so I got my bladder full, I've got my tank full. This is uh, basically an airplane gas station. You just gotta flip on that big switch on the side after you do your payment. So, I think we're good. Now I just have to mix oil. If you're unfamiliar with paramotors, they're generally two-stroke engines, like mine, and that requires uh, mixing oil in with the gas. So I have to carry all my own oil, and I have to be able to mix it. And basically I have a syringe and a bladder of oil, 
where I suck out as much oil as I need and just pump it into the tank. Kind of like this, but uh, you can see it's uh, not the neatest process ever. Check this out. I got the place all to myself. Freaking heated. Got the scout fueled up. Got my fuel bladder already mixed. Oil bladders cleaned off from the oil spill earlier. Wing, freaking couch, all to myself. I think I'm gonna leave this place and I checked it out. It's like a mile and a half walk to get to the nearest food place and like half of them are closed today. So I'm just gonna start walking and hopefully I'll find somewhere to eat. I'm like super freaking hungry. So let's plan. Let's see what we can find. Oh boy. So <clears throat> quick update sesh. I moved the motor out of the the room here because I got back and it smells like gas fumes. Like you can taste it in here. So don't want to die in my sleep. So I moved it outside. Um, anyways, I was walking down the street. It's like a mile and a half walk to the town. And I'm walking and this pickup truck turns around and super super nice guy comes up and he's like hey you want to ride and i'm like yeah if you're going that way great so we go to like three different places in town and they were all closed so he's like hey you like meatloaf and i'm like yeah sure and he's like great my wife's cooking so we go back to his house and his wife and brother are there and two kids and a couple dogs we just hung out drank some coffee you know chatted some stories up and had dinner i uh told him to check out my youtube channel i didn't feel comfortable like filming the whole expedition in someone's like private house. So shout out to you guys if you're watching this now. But anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna cap this one here because it's dark out and all I'm gonna do is plug in my GoPro, plug in my phone and uh, fall asleep on this here couch. Tomorrow morning, getting up bright and early, tune in for that episode. It'll be the next video I'm sure. And hopefully we'll make some good headway tomorrow because it's gonna be a full day, no delay in the morning get up before the sun rises and go. So till then, thanks for tuning in guys. Peace out. Bzz.